So Orange of the New Black Season 4 really had quite a bit of a facelift from any of the previous seasons, as far as the overall tone goes. No longer does it have the feel of a comedically tragic sorority house, but more like just a tragedy. But you know what? It is a nice change of pace from what originally started as a story of a narcissistic white girl and her many obstacles she can face in a women's prison system. And if I haven't said it yet guys, huge spoiler warning if you haven't seen any of the season yet. So there you go. Don't blast me in the comments or I'll throw you in YouTube Max. So with changes all around the Litchfield prison such as an unstable slew of new ex-military guards and a massive heap of new inmates arriving with even more on the way, all drama aside, it seems like Litchfield is literally about to burst at the seams. So the ending leaves us on a cliffhanger with the question, who will die a shoot? The sadistic prison guard Humphreys who finds pleasure in torturing the female inmates? Will she wait for lead guard Piscatella to come back and shoot him, since he's the ringleader of all these ex-military guards? Or will celebrity chef Judy King catch a stray bullet in all the commotion? Or will nobody get shot and will she be stopped and get her ass sent to maximum security where Ruby Rose's character is? And by the way, what the fuck, Orange is the New Black Riders? Ruby Rose is in this entire 13 episode season for one minute. Give the people what they want. So rather than just make a blindfolded guess, let's break down how a few of the main characters story ended and what we can expect to see from them in season five. Oh yeah, and by the way, they've already been greenlit for a sixth and seventh season, so here we go. Let's start with the tragic death of Pusey Washington. All jokes aside, this really was one of the saddest moments of the entire four season series. Not just the circumstances leading to the event of her death, but the corporate handling of it afterwards, ensuring there would be no egg on the face of anybody professionally associated with the prison. Although it was a nice touch to have all the flashbacks of Pusey in her journey to America and having a memorable farewell. So let's look at the unfortunate facts. The person dealing with Pusey's death the worst is not young officer Bailey, who was on top of her, but Suzanne, aka Crazy Eyes. Driven by the guilt, she wants to feel what it's like to have crushing weight on top of her to simulate the sensation of not being able to breathe. First with the books under Pusey's bunk, and then the library shelf where she ends up in the hospital next to her girlfriend, Maria Cucudio. Where I'm sure they rekindle their relationship as they were both kind of in the wrong for the fight. And as shocking as it was to see Crazy Eyes' backstory and how she ended up in Lynchfield, the real question will always seem to remain, why is she not in Psych? I mean, she is way too interesting a character for me to want to see stashed away in Psych or Max like Ruby Rose. Which, by the way, I'm not getting over anytime soon. But will it be Tasty who ends up paying the price for defending Pusey, as she was the one to inform everyone of Caputo's speech defending Officer Bailey? We'll have to see in Season 5. And what led Caputo to defending the truly innocent rather than given to the politics of the prison? Caputo has always been defending the inmates and the officers he hired for Litchfield, but it seems we're going to have quite a bit of a chess match between Caputo and Officer Piscatella. Piscatella and his whole crew of ex-military correction officers on his side, but in the cafeteria, Caputo does inform Piscatella that I know the real reason you transferred from maximum to minimum security, and it spooks the hell out of Piscatella that Caputo knows this, and I'm sure it'll be bad. After all, one of the ex-military guards who was trying to reassure Officer Bailey that everything was going to be alright, told him, hey, I made a kid juggle grenades and then I killed him because I was bored. I'm not a bad guy. If that's any indication of what's to come from Piscatella's closet, we're probably all going to be shocked he was hired in the first place. But slightly moving back to Dianara and even Dianara's mom, the speech that Caputo gave defending Officer Bailey was received around the area on the local news, not only by Dianara's mom, but also Healy. Now, Caputo never said the inmate's name who lost her life during his speech but a fearing mother knows no bounds. And on top of the rush of media I'm sure the jail is about to receive, we should also be getting concerned parents like Daya's mom, who I'm sure will find a way to get herself arrested again just to make sure her daughter's okay, and to also steer her away from her dangerous friends she's attached herself to. Another concerned parent will be Pusey Washington's father, Army Major James Washington. So that won't be any good when he shows up. Okay, so the grandiose question is what led Dianara to go all Negan from The Walking Dead on the inmates and the guards, and who will she shoot? So let's get this out of the way. I don't believe that she'll shoot anybody, at least on purpose. There's too much of a delay, there's no gunshot fade to black thing that TV shows love doing. And remember, a lot of the families surrounding her are armed to the teeth. So what I believe is that one of the white supremacist chicks is going to try to shiver in the back to sort of break the delay. Dianara will probably turn around and shoot her in the stomach, and the crazed guard will get his gun back and get everyone back to their bunks and on lockdown. That's just my very detailed prediction, but be sure to comment below and tell me how you think season five will start and how this whole altercation will go down. But her reason for not just handing off the gun is simply her wanting to feel accepted by her sisters, because after her mom got out, she just feels completely lonely and just wants some friends, no matter how dangerous it is to acquire them. This could also be a bit of a guilty by association thing, since a former guard got her pregnant and just ran off in the previous season, and she wants to take it out on anybody in a uniform. 
I could go much deeper into the details of even more characters. Those are the ones that I felt were the most important to leading into Season 5. And that's the great thing about Orange is the New Black. There's so much depth and character and still so much we don't know about a lot of the current inmates and how they got there. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below for videos like this and more. And as always, guys, this is Five Fingers with the Finger Bang Show. I'm out. I am going to bury you.